My name is Vicky Carpenter. I'm head of the invasive department here um, in the cardiac physiology at Adam Brooks Hospital. Cardiac physiology is um, a relatively unknown area of healthcare science, um, although I've been working in it for over 20 years now. We cover a lot of areas within the hospital, um, looking at people's hearts, either through non-invasive techniques like um, ECGs or echoes, or more invasive techniques like the implantation of pacemakers, doing angiograms on patients so we can look at their coronary arteries, and also following those patients up. Patients are referred to us from a variety of sources. We see patients that can be referred from their GP. They might have gone to see them because they've been suffering with chest pain. They might be feeling dizzy or they might be having palpitations. And the, the GPs may send the patients to us um, to have a 24-hour tape, for example, if they were getting palpitations. If the GPs heard a heart murmur or something like that, then they'd come to us for an echo, which is the ultrasound scan of the heart. We also see inpatients, so again, inpatients can come through the emergency department um, with dizzy spells, they might be having a heart attack, um, and we may see them to perform some diagnostic tests to help the doctors diagnose what the problem is. Our patients are often very concerned when they come and see us. We have to be incredibly compassionate with them, be very understanding. They are often quite scared, they're vulnerable in the nature that they're in the hospital in the first place. Um, and we have to be caring towards them, um, towards them and their relatives who again often have lots of questions. The patient might arrive in our department, um, depending on what uh, test they're having, they will see one of, one of the team members. Um, they'll be invited into um, a room, um, a confidential space, where there are, they ask, we, we ask some questions as to um, what their name and their date of birth is to make sure we have our correct patient. And then depending on the test they have, um, the physiologist will explain the test fully to the patient, make sure they're aware what they're having, and then perform the test for them. So one of the tests that you'll be performing whilst a student in, in the hospital with us will be an electrocardiogram. This really is the bread and butter of our work. And although it's a test that is performed many, many times, it really is the basis of our diagnosis of patients with heart disease. Nearly every patient that comes through our doors, one way or another, will have an ECG because you can get so much information from it. You can get information regarding their conduction system, regarding the size of their heart, regarding the rhythm that their heart's in, and that can lead us to decide what other tests that we need the patient to have. The students that we have, um, they are expected by the third year to be able to perform an ECG. With performing ECGs, you can do that by, I would say, the end of your first year if you've got enough clinical experience. However, it's more to do with the analyst of the ECG. So it's actually looking at an ECG and saying, well, actually, that's normal, or actually, no, that's normal, and actually further then getting the assistance that you need if it's not normal. So um, it's as you get further and further into the degree, so by your third year you should know by this point that an ECG isn't normal and you should know by that point as well that you need to get help or you need to refer that patient on to someone else. So an ECG is a non-invasive test, it, it takes about 10 minutes, it doesn't hurt the patient, they have to lie there um, calmly on a couch, very relaxed and have some stickers um, popped onto their chest and their arms and their legs. We then attach them up to a machine um, which will take the electrical signals from every part of their body um, using an algorithm which will produce then that 12 lead ECG that we show to the doctors. Another test that you might have done after you've had an ECG or if you come to the hospital complaining of palpitations or dizziness is a 24 hour monitor. This is a small monitor that's attached to you as you would expect for 24 hours and we can look at ECG data for that amount of time. For those patients that have their symptoms once or twice a day, we'd be very lucky to capture that information on an ECG. So with a 24 hour monitor, we have a much longer period of time where we can spot any fast or slow heart rhythms on the 24 hour monitor.
So some patients need pacemakers because their heart starts to go too slowly. So and that causes patients to feel quite unwell. So for example, they might be fainting, um, feeling dizzy, feeling like they're going to black out. Um, some people that gives them palpitation, so they're, they're very aware of the heart beating in a strange manner. And, um, and sometimes those, particularly if they're feeling like they're going to faint, that puts people at significant risk of injury and can affect their driving, for example. So um, to treat those kind of heart rhythms, if they're going too slowly, um, for many people, a pacemaker um, makes them feel much better. A pacemaker is an implanted device. The unit, it's like a little tiny computer, is implanted under the skin, um, just below the collarbone. And then there's a wire that runs down into the heart. And the pacemaker asks those wires to deliver electrical symbols to actually get the heart to beat. By doing that, they keep the heart beating at a normal level. A pacemaker is implanted um, in the cardiac uh, catheter laboratory. It's done under local anaesthetic, so the patients are awake while they have it put in. There's a, there's a small incision, um, but in general, um, the procedure takes an hour or so, and uh, the patients are reasonably comfortable throughout. After having a pacemaker implanted, the patient is usually seen about six weeks later in the pacemaker clinic. Um, at that point, we check that the pacemaker is able to see what the patient's own heart is doing. Um, so then it knows when it needs to work. And we measure, um, for example, how much energy it takes for the pacemaker um, to get the heart to beat and um, a number of other things. So we can just test that the pacemaker is working as it should. We also take the patient into account at that point and make, you know, make sure the pacemaker is doing everything it can to actually help them feel better. We might see them again later, that, they later within that year and then eventually we just see them once a year in the pacemaker clinic. When a patient comes to clinic, we have a pacemaker programmer that we um, connect the patient up to so we can check the pacemaker. So that's got two parts, so we put on a basic um, ECG so we can actually monitor the heart rhythm um, and that helps us to, to test the pacemaker. And then there's also what we call a wand, which we place over the pacemaker and that's able to communicate directly with the pacemaker through the skin, so it's not invasive. Um, but then we can actually, it's almost like having the, then it up on a computer screen so that then we can run the test in the pacemaker and make changes if we need to. So when students visit us here at Addenbrooke's, um, we have a, a nice clear programme for them to follow. Obviously, day-to-day -day clinical work has to go on as we are a hospital, but we're also very passionate about our students and training them to um, the highest that they can achieve. All the students that come to this hospital um, all have, they all have a mentor, which is me, but they also have within the department people that they can go to to advise them. Um, so they're never left on their own, they never get to work on their own, there, there is always somebody with them and on their induction I take them round and I get them to introduce themselves to each and every member of staff so that each and every member of staff knows who they are, knows what they're here for. Not the first day but the second day we will start getting them involved in what they need to do. They will basically be told, you know, this is the area that you're working in. What we want you to say to the patient is that I am a student. Are you happy for me to be in the room while your test is being performed? Later on, as they grow as students in, in the third year, we would expect them to be able to take on that onus themselves. Um, a lot of the time, the seniors within the department will say to the patient as they go and collect the patient, we've got a student, do you mind if that student stays and watches or do you mind if the student takes part in the test? But all throughout the degree process, not one student is left on their own. After you finish your degree, get your CV together, get your references sorted and yeah, just put yourself out there. Whilst you're on placement, if you make a good impression, if you put yourself forward, you, you never know, you could be employed by the person that gives you that placement. The healthcare science degree now um, comes within the remit of modernising scientific careers. Um, within that, that means there is onward progression from the undergraduate degree, should you wish to do so. Lots of um, newly qualified graduates will stay within the profession for a few years and then if they want to there's the opportunity to go on and do a master's course um, within the National School of Healthcare Science. 
This is a three-year funded course where you'll learn the more advanced techniques within cardiac physiology, um, such as the ICD side, the more advanced imaging side, and you will undertake a master's course at a higher educational institution. Should you wish to progress further than that, there are now um, research courses available, although these are very few and far between, but we've been lucky enough at Addenbrooke's that we have two people starting that this year. Respiratory physiology for me is a really brilliant profession purely because it combines not only the science but also an interaction with the patients. And then here we have the gas analyzer which is used in the single breath gas transfer.